Walter, Director of Development for Airlink, and welcome to Airlink's Donor Dialogue. Airlink is a global humanitarian organization delivering critical aid to communities in crisis by providing airlift and logistical support to nonprofit partners, changing the way the humanitarian community responds to disasters around the world. Being experts at disaster logistics and building long-term relationships with airlines and nonprofits, Airlink harnesses the power and speed of aviation to help people living through humanitarian crises and the aftermath of natural disasters. As a charitable nonprofit organization, we depend upon the thoughtful generosity of donations from businesses within the aviation sector, foundations, and individuals, as well as in-kind flights from our airline partners. Through your support of Airlink, you help ensure that transportation and logistics challenges and costs are removed as a barrier to NGOs responding and delivering humanitarian aid. From time to time, I'll be highlighting our programs and donors and how you can help make an impact by supporting Airlink's mission too. Today, we highlight a program to help the people of Yemen that's been supported by Airlink through your generosity. Yemen's a country in Western Asia located on the Southern end of the Arabian Peninsula. It's in the midst of one of the world's largest humanitarian crises that includes, according to the UN Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, more than 20 million people in need of humanitarian assistance and over 4 million internally displaced people as a result of a civil war that started in 2014. Health, essential health services have collapsed and that's where our partners at NYC Medics come in. Airlink has provided them with logistical coordination and flights for over $40,000 in first aid supplies and PPE as Yemen was bracing for a second COVID wave. And we've offered them um, uh, flights to help bring their expertise um, into Yemen to train a new generation of emergency responders for pre-hospital care. I'm pleased to be talking with Kathy Bakwari, Executive Director of NYC Medics. Kathy, welcome. Hi, Sandra. Thank you so much for having us. And Kathy, where are you joining us from today? I am in Aden, Yemen. Well, thanks so much. You all are doing such great work, and Airlink is proud to have you as one of our NGO partners. Can you, for in just a few words, describe yourself and your involvement in NYC Medics? Sure. I am the Executive Director. Um, we're a small organization, so I'm, I'm really involved in a lot of the program work, and I'm here um, in my capacity as executive director, providing support to our country team as we transition into the second phase of our project. What are three things that um, you want people to know about NYC Medics, and in particular, you know, how it, what makes it impactful and stand apart in the humanitarian world? Yeah, sure. So we're a disaster relief and humanitarian aid organization, and we really pride ourselves in employing a, an adaptable, flexible model that allows us to meet emerging needs on the ground um, as, as they develop. It's really not a one-size-fits-all mentality. Um, we focus on access, uh, excuse me, accessing really inaccessible and difficult to reach communities through our disaster relief operations by sending typically fully um, volunteer-based emergency medical teams. Um, and we predominantly focus on pre-hospital care, trauma care, and emergency care services. And then also recognizing the need for these services in most of the countries in which we work, not only during disasters, but on a day-to-day -day basis. We also focus on, um, we have a second program, health systems development, where we focus on building pre-hospital care patient referral systems and emergency care systems in these in these countries. Tell us a little bit about who volunteers for your program. Our volunteers are the lifeline for our disaster response. They're these incredibly exceptionally skilled and compassionate um, paramedics, doctors, nurses, physicians assistants. They're, they're these clinical professionals who in a moment's notice drop everything in their life and kind of upend everything in their life to respond to a disaster halfway around the world. Is there a, just you know one story in particular that illustrates the importance of the work that you're doing in Yemen? Oh, sure, yeah. So pre-hospital care really didn't exist before our arrival here. And essentially they had ambulances with drivers and occasionally there would be a staffed uh, clinical professional, typically from the facility that the ambulance was based. 
but there was no regulatory framework or training guidelines or governance or oversight for pre-hospital care in general. So essentially what we're doing, um, we're transforming pre-hospital care in Yemen and we're in partnership with our Yemeni colleagues who operate the uh, emergency ambulance service here in Aden. Um, we've developed the entire pre-hospital care system um, and that's everything from training, you know, the human resource development of the national staff and really intensive and focused training to developing trauma systems and patient referral pathways um, and all the stuff in between their communication algorithms, clinical protocols. And I, I start the story with that because without that, a system wouldn't work. And the example of that is, um, so we had we were in our second training. So we had one cohort that we trained and they've, ordered, they've graduated and they're operating the ambulance service, they're operating in the ambulances. It was during our second training, um, ironically on the, the trauma training day that a student spoke of an incident that had ha happened several months before we were even in Aden. Um, there was an IED explosion. Uh, the, crews, the crews rolled up and they found several people injured. Um, and one that was really critically injured with bilateral amputation. So it was quite significant. And despite him calling out for help and crying, you know, crying out in pain, nobody approached him. They were scared, they were drivers. They didn't know how to help him and they didn't know what to do. So very sadly, this person didn't make it, he passed away. And it was just around the time of hearing this story that another blast occurred in Aden. And it happened to be um, on shift for a crew that was trained in our program. So they arrived on scene, again, multiple casualties, one significant injury, um, a, a critical patient who had a one lower limb amputation. And not only do we train our medics in how to apply a tourniquet, but we also teach them how to create and apply a makeshift tourniquet that's essentially just a tourniquet made out of whatever material is available. So our crew, wrote, you know, our crew arrived, they applied a makeshift tourniquet. The medic did an incredible job. He and his partner then you know, really worked quickly to stabilize the patient and transport him to the appropriate facility. So that referral pathway was really important. They arrived on time, received by the emergency department and that patient survived. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> the power of, of the great work that you do. And um, also of our colleagues too. They, work, they have worked really hard, our, our national you know, Yemeni colleagues, they've worked really hard to learn this stuff and apply it and, and to continue to strengthen their skills on a daily basis. Helping no doubt hundreds and thousands of people in the process. We hope so, yes. Um, Give listeners an example of how, um, you know, the logistical challenges that you all faced in terms of getting aid, um, supplies <laughs> to help support your work into, sure. in, into <laughs> Yemen and, and how Airlink, you know, helped to provide you with the support and, and the solutions uh, to be able to do that. Yeah, of course. So because of our model, NYC Medics, um, we have a, a, an expertise in moving smaller amounts of gear. So when our teams deploy to sudden onset disasters, we hand carry everything in because we're rapid response disaster relief teams. The moment we arrive in country, we are fully self-sufficient and capable of operating in the, in the field for up to two weeks. So we carry all that yeah. stuff in with us. We know how to do it and we do that well. Well, we can manage that well. Um, these larger shipments across multiple borders that require various means of transport and an intimate knowledge of logistics are still a learning curve for us. And that's where Airlink provides an expertise that we're still working to develop. And specifically for Yemen, we needed to get our gear here um, really quickly. So the more conventional methods that we were looking into of shipping from the US, it wasn't going to work because they typically, um, what we were finding would take upwards of four or more months to get here and we needed it much more quickly than that. So on top of that, we're operating in an environment that's highly regulated um, with significant access issues. So with time being a limited factor, the expertise to navigate just this incredibly complex process and in, in an even more complex environment um, there were really significant issues for us to address. So 
The process is long and arduous and really expensive. Um, and that's where Airlink really stepped in. They immediately identified, you guys have immediately identified ANC partners. We've paved the way for getting this medical and training these medical training supplies here um, in a time frame and a budget that we needed, honestly. Well, I'm I'm glad that glad that we could help. Um, is there anything else that you want to share uh, with the folks who are watching today? You know, I just I really want. We're so thankful to Airlink for your support and that of their donors as well. Um, not only in terms of managing both the actual logistics of getting our supplies here from the U.S. to add in, but also the technical advisement that you guys have provided throughout this entire process. Like I've learned so much from you guys. Um, and I realize there's still so much to learn because you're navigating and paving the way in this really complex environment and making it seem easy. So we just wanna say thank you so much. Um, without Airlink's help to pave the way, this would have been so much more difficult uh, for us to complete. Kathy, th thanks for sharing all of that. And uh, please give our, our regards to everyone in Yemen. Um, for all the great work they're doing, both uh, your Thank team you. that's come in and the folks that are on the ground. Um, and thanks to all of you who are giving so generously to Airlink as a charity of choice. We invite everyone listening to help Airlink expand our ability to help uh, between disasters and with complex crises like this. 24-7, 365, Airlink is responding someplace in the world. We're proud to be highly rated by both Charity Navigator and GuideStar. And to learn more about Airlink and how to support our responses, please reach out at www.airlinkflight.org or let us know what your goals are and, and we'll talk about how you can help. Thanks again, Kathy. Good luck, be safe. And we look forward Thank to continuing so our partnership with all of you. Absolutely. Thank you so much.